Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Dave Curran. I'm the instructional coach for technology here at Saigon South Elementary Schools, uh, Saigon Science International Schools Elementary Division. I'm a member of the VTC committee and a co-host of this workshop. SSIS is honored to be hosting the ninth annual Vietnam Tech Conference in collaboration with Eunice Hanoi. It's also my honor on behalf of the VTC committee to introduce to you Nomar Adona, who will be talking to us today about 3D sculpting and printing. Um, uh, Nomar is an architect, an IB AP art teacher, IB visual arts examiner and team leader. He is also a practicing visual artist and 3D tutorial writer. As a visual artist, his work in ballpoint pen and ink drawing was featured in television, magazines and blogs, both locally and internationally. He is known as Nomar Adona in the 3D community and has written various online tutorials related to 3D modeling. I'm super excited about this workshop as a, a tech geek myself. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand you over to your workshop presenter today. It's over to you, Nomer. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, and I welcome you to this uh, workshop. Without further ado, I guess we need to start. We, we can start. Let me just uh, open my browser. Okay, so before we... Um, Sorry, should be from the very beginning. So before we start, again, once again, my name is Nomar Adona. I'm the high school art teacher here at Saigon South International School. So before this, I want to ask you, how many of you has experience with uh, sculpt modeling in computer? You can use your, um, your uh, reaction, you know? If, can you just uh, give me a thumbs up if you have experience? modeling uh, in the 3D. Okay. Okay, so how many of you um, has experience with 3D printing? Okay, thank you very much. So today we will be looking at that workflow between 3D sculpting to 3D printing. I was introduced already, so no need for this uh, particular slide. So our goals for this workshop are as follows. Number one, to understand the workflow between digital sculpting to 3D printing. Number two, to help you participants to be acquainted through Sculpt GL and to reflect and discuss the possibilities of using this tool in your own teaching practice. So I hope that uh, for this one hour, we will be able not just only to uh, understand, but at the same time, try, play, manipulate on your own. So this is more on your, you guys, you will be playing with this, with this uh, uh, sculpt uh, digital or digital sculpting tool. There are a lot of digital sculpting softwares, namely Sculptris, ZBrush, Madbox, some are free, like Sculptris, Blender, and Sculpt GL. Imagine a digital clay. So I want you to, to, to look at this clay, okay? So this clay is here. So imagine that you have clay in your hand, but instead of holding it with your fingers or with your hand, you are actually manipulating it in your screen. You can wedge it, you can pinch it, you can pull it, you can flatten it, you can do whatever you want. So here with me, I have a lot of uh, images. So this is actually my first 3D, 3D printed um, model. So as you can see that this one is, has been printed already, but I uh, sculpted using digital software, okay? Some of our students, they also created. So I have one here, I hope you can see it. Okay, and uh, as you can see that our student did not stop there. They use this software in or this uh, model in art after printing, and then they had to add some. Under here, okay, if you can see, it is actually a sculpture. So the 3D printed is just only this one and that one. I have some more here. So this one was my IB student. 
you can see that uh, she used this uh, software and uh, this digital sculpting tool, printed them and ultimately painted on top of them. The good, the good news is this, you can do whatever you want after you printed or you 3D printed the model. So my daughter Lani, two years ago, she also created this uh, skull. And, and then after that, she uh, 3D printed it and created this IB uh, work. Another student, Amanda Nguyen, what she did is uh, she, uh, she created this actually in ZBrush, not digital um, sculpt, not uh, sculpt GL, not sculptress, but ZBrush. So ZBrush is one of the top uh, sculpt modeling software used in the Hollywood. So you can see that uh, uh, our students, you know, whenever they, they want to do stuff like this, it's just amazing. You know, they can learn it really on their own. And here with me, it's just, uh, as you can see, this was the, the printed one. And what she, what she has um, done here is just she added a lot of elements. Sorry for that. And uh, two years ago, um, Fat Nguyen also created this um, sculptures. The 3D uh, sculpted print or 3D printed are only uh, the top part. So the, the rest is actually 3D mache, uh, paper mache. And I'll give you another sample here. So here, the 3D printed is just the head. And then after that, he, he hybridized and added some other stuff like wood, um, you know, found materials, things like that. So what is the basic workflow between digital sculpting and 3D printing? So this is kind of like, a, um, you, the first one is really a sculpt, your form with Sculptris, Sculpt GL, Mudbox, ZBrush, Blender, etc. Then this is the most important thing. Export your output uh, through OBJ file. Okay, then the next one is open this OBJ file with Kura. Kura is a free program. It is a free application where you can um, open any OBJ file, an STL file, and eventually you can um, you can print. Okay, I'll give you um, this. Uh, I'll show you this uh, uh, this um, sorry. This image here. So this is what uh, uh, we have done. So you can see the, the skull here that has been modeled by my daughter. We have to um, open it in Ultimate uh, Ulti Maker Kura. And then after that, you can manipulate what size and then uh, just uh, do all the settings and then save the file to, to, the, to the disk. And then you can then use this one, or if you, just like, for example, in our school, we use Prusa. So you have to identify that I will be printing it in Prusa and then just save everything. So I will not be uh, talking about this 3D printing because this one has been already covered this morning. However, I will be talking to you about this uh, Sculpt GL tool, which we will be talking about this afternoon. The good thing is this, last year, COVID, has taught us to innovate in teaching. So during the lockdown, I developed a whole lesson plans and found another online digital sculpting tool, which is free and we can all use this. So this afternoon, I'm going to ask you to try this, okay? So what I will be doing is I will be showing you another slide. Can you, shoot, can you see the slide now? Okay, let me just stop the, uh, the other one first and then I will show you another slide. So this one. So this is like a blob of clay. So this afternoon, I will just be presenting with you the basic things that I do. And then later I will invite you to play with it, okay? So you don't have, uh, at the moment, disregard this, okay? The most important thing that I want you to look at this afternoon is this is sculpting and painting. There are basic things that I need you to look at. Okay, the first one, there are different tools here. You have brush, inflate, twist, flatten, pinch, crease, drag, paint, 
move, and so on and so forth. The next thing that you need to look at is this radius and intensity. Radius is basically the radius of your brush. If you drag this, this from left to right, you will see that your brush will become either smaller or bigger. The intensity is the amount of effect that, that will be applied on the, on the clay or the digital clay. So the good thing is you have also hotkeys in your uh, keyboard. The hotkey for radius is X, while the hotkey for, for intensity is C. Okay, if you want positive sculpting, all you have to do is keep on adding. So this is the additive technique. However, if you want subtractive technique, you need to press N or Alt, or just click this thing. Notice that I am subtracting my model whenever I press negative or I click N in my hotkeys. So that is for brush tool. The next one is inflate tool. Inflate tool is just like blowing a balloon. So see, everything is inflated like a balloon. Now you can also do this negatively if you will press N or click this window there. So let's try to move this and I will make my radius a little bit smaller. Notice that I am sculpting negatively. Okay, if I want the effect quickly, I might want to increase my intensity. So that is the inflate uh, tool. The next one is flatten tool. The flatten tool basically is to flatten some areas. It's just like when you are uh, wedging your clay. Okay, notice the effect. You can just flatten certain areas quickly. So it's flattened. The next one is, is this tool called smooth tool. The smooth tool, you can also access it using shift key in your keyboard. Okay, so if you press shift key, anything will be smoothened as if you are, you know, you are using water to, to soften or to smoothen your, your, your clay. So this time, if you put shift there, okay, anything, will be smoothened. Now the next one is, okay, crystal. Crystal is for producing, you know, sharp edges. Just like when you are, when we are folding paper. So you need to, to you, we can produce that, that uh, uh, the crease of the fold, you know? So this, this is the idea. So you can create, you know, noticeable hard edges. You can do that also negatively. So that is the crease tool. The next one is the drag tool. This is one of my favorite. The drag tool is simply, you can drag your model, okay, anywhere. You can drag it in, you can drag it out. Notice that it, has, it doesn't have the negative, okay? doesn't have it because you can drag it in or you can drag it out. Okay, so that, that's the drag tool. Some of my students, they play a lot with this. And all sometimes, you know, they, you know, you know, kids, they want to create horns, they, they want to create boils, they want, they, you know, they love doing all this uh, uh, different stuff. The next one is um, transform tool. Transform tool is basically you can transform it uh, transport it globally, globally, or uh, you know, using the the different, um, you know, you can transport it to the left. You can move it to the left. You can move it to the right. Without further ado, this is what I'm going to ask you. Okay, I want you to to play with it. I'm going to give you the link. Okay, in the chat box. If you go to the chat box. There is my chat box. Let me stop sharing first.
Okay, I cannot open my chat box at the moment. David, can you help me? Okay, here. So if you go to the chat box, I gave you the link. Okay, can you please click that link and you will be, you will be um, directed to, to this Sculpt GL software. And uh, this is an online tool, so this is free. And I'll give you maybe about 20 minutes to play with it. And if you have any question, you can send me some, uh, maybe a chat, uh, a chat message, or you can share your screen perhaps, and uh, let us see what you are doing. Is that okay? Can I have a thumbs up if you want to play with it? Thank you. So I want you to play with it. Try to, try to look at this. Right. Yes, thank you. So play with this, well, play with this uh, Sculpt GL. So imagine that you have the, the plane in your hand. Thank you. Nomar, would you like people to keep their questions until the end or are you okay for people to jump in at any time? Um, they, can, uh, they can either, uh, I also welcome if you can, um, we can allow them to share their screen so that we can see their screen. Sure, no problem. So that, uh, we, we see what they are doing. Yeah, so if anyone would like to um, ask no more question, uh, feedback some, any sort of contribution or share your screen, you can use the raise hand feature and then no more will see your hand raised and then he will, he can ask you to share your screen and unmute your mic. Thank you. So this time is, uh, you guys, all, all, all you have to do now is I, I will stop talking and then I will allow you to just play with it. And maybe uh, to inspire you, I will uh, I will also do it together with you. But uh, I'm I'm not going to talk anymore. Okay, maybe that's the best.
If you've just entered the Zoom call, don't worry, we are not having issues with audio. Uh, there should be a link in the chat, and through that link, you can go to uh, Sculpt GL and just work independently, playing around with that platform for another few moments. Thanks. Thank you very much.
So we have a question in the chat, Noma, you may be able to help us with. Okay. So um, Len is asking how to export uh, to a printing model. So okay. Maybe that would be a nice segue to the next section, I think. Okay, so this is uh, all you have to do is uh, file, and then you have to save it as OBJ. You can also save it as STL, but the best thing, uh, the, my, my thing is, uh, my uh, workflow is I save it as an OBJ file. And then from OBJ file here, I go to Kura. So I don't, I wonder if you can see uh, Kura here. So let's say stop. I'm going to present to you Kura. Okay, so this is the Ultimaker Kura. So all you have to do is open the OBJ file here and then drop it there. Okay, and um, that's it. You could just uh, preview what is happening. If you are not touching anything, you have to choose what kind of printer that you, you want to use. So in my case, we're using the Prusa printer, okay? Then once you are done with that, and then with all the settings, you have to save file on your, um, uh, there is a small disk, and then that small disk, you have to upload it to your Prusa printer, that's it. Did I answer the question? Okay, so just save it as OBJ file. Okay, we have only a few minutes left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to please to ask you to come back to our main uh, portal here. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing. So this time uh, I, want to, uh, I want to ask some volunteers to show what you have done. Yeah, you can actually share your screens. Yeah. So if you would like to share what you, um, anything today, just raise your hand using the, uh, the reactions and then we can unmute your microphone and share your screen. Any willing volunteers? Okay, I would like to share my creation no more if that's okay. Yes, please, yeah. Apologies in advance. Um, let me see, make sure I get the right one. Good. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I had a, I actually had a question about this number. So you can see on the top of this masterpiece that um, I've got two horns. Now initially they were just I just used the drag tool to drag um, you know drag one horn out and obviously then because it's symmetrical it dragged the other and they were just short at the time. Yeah. I then went back and did some more painting. I then went back again to the model clicked on the drag tool again, went back to the tip of the horn and dragged them up even further, that, yeah. which is what you can see. And when I did that last step, yeah. I got this almost, um, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, I'm, this modeled effect on, on the design, is that, which actually reminds me of what happens when a 3D, an actual 3D printing um, isn't, uh, um, what's the word? It, it, it can't handle the definition of, of the model. Is that, is what's going on here now with my design, is that telling me that that's how it will appear when it prints, that the printer actually won't be able to handle that much definition? Um, it depends actually on your setting when you print it. But okay. uh, the next step now is really there is a topology there. So what I have uh, done is I only introduced to you the basic tool of, you know, to just to get you acquainted. Uh -huh. but there are some more that you will play there. There is what they call the topology wherein okay. you have to, uh, uh, to manage the number of polygons. But that is, that is another thing uh, that, uh, that I put actually in the tutorial so that you will be able to have the best, um, uh, the best output for your 3D printing. Okay, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen now before I um, mentally scar anyone for life. <laughs> Let me stop. Any others? Thank, thanks for that, Noah. Yes, any others? We, we, we'd love to see what you have done, you know, playing with this, uh, with this digital uh, software. Anyone? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Marie. Oh, there you are. Great job. Okay. I was just playing with the tools. Let's see. <laughs> A little 
fumbly with this. Where are we? Well, I can't find this again. Uh, you, you have to look at the, let's see. Sorry. There is this digital, maybe you close it. I don't know. Anyway, if you can see it, I was just playing with the tools, if you can hear me. Yeah, so how is it? Oh, it was exciting. It was, um, it was exciting. I don't, uh, you know, I, it, yeah, it was three dimensional. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's free. And yes. Oh, so yep. nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. How about the others? So this time, if there are no other people, so that uh, what we will do today is I'm going to, to ask you to put in, or we will put you into a breakout rooms. So the question would be, and let, let me just present again my uh, PowerPoint. Discuss and reflect how you might use this in your own classroom. So discuss and reflect how you might use this tool in your own classroom. Okay. So can we uh, put them in the um, in the breakout room? Here we have a total of three, four, five, six, twelve 12 people. So I will create four breakout rooms that should put us in roughly threes. That's so nice. I will do that. Okay, and um, you should, you'll be assigned automatically. So there'll be um, two to three participants in each room. Yep. Then after, uh, after maybe about five minutes, we ask them to come back. Sure. So no more, I'm gonna assign you to room three with Elisa, okay? Okay.
And welcome back, everyone. Okay, anyone who wants to share? What did you discuss? Okay, I, I think that's it. Um, so I'm going, what I'm going to do for the, this one is I will give them the link with, uh, if, if you want to continue uh, looking at it, I created some tutorial for my students. So just to give you a little bit of uh, context, last year, uh, there was a lockdown here and I don't know what to do with my students. So I, I talked with Alyssa about this thing. So in the end, um, I was looking, you know, because, Sculptris is good, but you need to you need to install it with every computer. I stumbled with Sculpt GL, which is that the the software or the application that have that you have tried. So in the end, I um, I created a little bit of tutorials, and then I challenged my students to you know during that lockdown maybe they they have to play with it. So in the end, a lot of my students they. Or, or many of my um, art two students play with it, and some samples I still have in my hands here. And and uh, amazingly, you know, it's just fabulous. So they sent me the file, and then we printed the file, and uh, that's it. But uh, if you want to access those um, tutorials that I uh, um, shared with my students, I am also sharing to you here. Uh, David? Yep. Thank, uh, sorry, Norman. Thank you so much. Uh, as Nomar mentioned, we will be sharing a, f a link to a folder of resources that Nomar has created, including the slides from today and those tutorial videos. They will be available through the Whova app, hopefully within the next, should be within the next 24 hours. So you can access the session. And don't forget, although this um, kind of marks the end of the session today, you can still access the session Q&A and the session chat through the Whova app. Ask any further questions you have of Nomar and keep in touch with each other as a group. So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you find that session useful. I know I did. And uh, Nomar, thank you very much to you. A big round of a, a Zoom round of applause for Nomar for sharing his expertise today. Thank you, Nomar. Don't forget, though, that is not the end of VTC. At 4 p.m., we have our fantastic virtual social event. You can find the Zoom link through the Hoover app, and there are some prizes to be won on that. So don't miss it. Thanks for yeah. joining VTC this year. And yeah, thank you. Have so a great much. rest of the weekend. Bye, yes, thank you so much. So, can I ask one question? Sure, please. Is that, is that event is for the P, the three D printing as well? Uh, no, sorry. The event the event at four pm is a general social event <laughs> for anyone who would like to join. So it is not uh, discipline specific. Um, it is basically an opportunity for us to all connect in a, in a less formal situation, and there'll be some some prizes to be won, some more kind of social chat, some networking happening during that event. That is being facilitated by our wonderful elementary school um, EAL <laughs> grade one teacher here, Ceci Gomez Galvez. So she'll be providing more information at the very start of. That thing. But knowing oh. Ceci, this is probably something you will not want to miss. Oh, that sounds great, right? Oh, thank you so much, and thank you so much, Meet the Normal. I, I'm You're just welcome. a beginner uh, 3D printing. Uh, I teach uh, science, especially especially in physics, physics. But I really want. Like, I'm falling in love with the 3D printing. So, um, how can I contact with you uh, about the? about the Kura Maker, the app you just shared with us, but I don't know how to use that app. So how can I, con can I contact with you to ask some questions about that app? Sure. <laughs> so yeah, on the Hoover app, um, Nomer will place his um, contact details, including his school email address. And, and on Nomer's profile, you can also see his links to his social media profiles, um, whether it's Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter, etc. So all of that will be available through the Hoover app, and it will be updated over the next 24 hours to include all the resources from today on Nomer's contact details, etc. Okay. Oh, so I can... So Sorry, I can, uh, I, uh, in the chat box, if you go to the chat box, you might want to save uh, the, you know, the link where you can download Kura. 
Oh, yes, yeah, thank you so much. <coughs> so, uh, I can find out your contact uh, on your profile, right? That's correct. Yeah, through the Hoover app. Yeah, so once we end the Zoom call today, we will, so Hoover <coughs> is kind of pre-conference and post-conference. So once we end the, the Zoom call today, then everyone can jump back on Hoover and we continue the conversation there. Are there any final questions before we wrap up for this afternoon? No, awesome. Once again, thank you so much for all your contributions, especially to you, Nomer, for sharing your expertise today. And enjoy the rest of VTC, everyone.